So welcome everybody, to this latest video 162 maths and in this video we'll be going over the AQA AS maths past paper of May June of 2019 paper 2 section B which is the statistics section. Now as always I'll include a question breakdown in the description below so you can see which question refers to which topic. So let's get started on this section B of the 2019 paper 2 paper. So it says for question 11 that a survey is undertaken to find out the most popular political party in London. The first 1100 people, available people from London were surveyed. Identify the name of this type of sampling and you want to circle your answer. So the correct answer is going to be opportunity sampling simply because they've picked basically the first 1100 people in one place with no sort of random element to it or no looking at number of males or females or any other genders and quote sample is not quite because they've picked one particular city and that's the city that they actually want so they've actually chosen from the population but not used a particular method to filter out that sample collection for question 12 it says that Manny is studying the price and the number of pages of a random sample of books he calculates the value of the product moment correlation coefficient between the price and the number of pages in each book is 1.05. Which of the following best describes the value of 1.05? Now for this, the only possible answer you should be only writing is the fact that it's definitely incorrect. And the reason for that is because when you're looking at the product moment correlation, that your values should be between minus one and one and him having a value of 1.05 means that he has definitely budged up that calculation. Then moving on to question 13, it says that Denzel wants to buy a car with a propulsion type other than petrol or diesel. So in other words, in terms of the type of engine, he takes a sample from the large data set of the CO2 emissions in grams per kilometer of cars with one particular propulsion type. The sample is as follows. Now for part 13a, it says using the knowledge of the large data set state which propulsion type this sample is and for giving your reason for your answer. Now for this, you basically want to say that the potential options are is either from electric or it's going to be from petrol. Now other book other, other possible answers you could say is that it could be hybrid or category 8. So anything along those lines regarding the engine type would be absolutely fine. And the reason for this is you want to state something along the lines of that this is the only category with this many values so something along those lines would be good enough for the answer for those two marks then for question 13b it says calculate the sum the mean of the sample so for this all we need to do is use our calculator now hopefully you've got a casio fx991 ex calculator or the cg50 but in other words the general steps you need to go is if you go to menu statistics you then type in one variable and then once you've got to there, you then want to enter the eight numbers. So enter the eight numbers. Then once you've done that, what you then want to do is on your calculator, if you press the option button on the calculator and then select one variable calculation. Now for the mean, what you're wanting is X bar. And if you look that value up, you should get a value of 72.375. Alternately, what you could do is just simply add all those numbers up and divide by how many numbers you've got, and you should get the same answer. Then for part C, it then says calculate the standard deviation of the sample. So for this, the formula is going to be, well, again, it's only worth one mark, so you should really be using the calculator. Now the sample standard deviation if you've still got on the screen is the s value now if you look that up on your list of one variable calculations that that should give you a value of 28.7 now the mark scheme does allow you to use the population 
standard deviation, which is sigma, and that is a value of 26.8. But as it says, the standard deviation of the sample, the correct answer should be 28.7. Now, certainly, if you've used a formula to work out the values, that's absolutely fine. But for one single mark, they probably will be implying that you are using your calculator feet function on your calculator to work out that stamp sample standard deviation. Then for 13D, it says Denzel claims that the value 13 is an outlier. And then for DI, it says any value more than two standard deviations from the mean can be regarded as an outlier. Verify that Denzel's claim is correct. So for this, if we have a look at the outlier range, then it's basically X bar plus or minus two lots of the sample standard deviation. So using the calculations from 13C, we get 72.375 plus or minus two lots of 28.7. Now, if I type that into my calculator, I get my outlier range. So anything falls outside of this range is going to be 14.975 and that's the lower bound and the upper bound is going to be 129.775 so here you can see that as 13 is less than 14.975 then 13 is an outlier and Denzel's claim is correct and that would be fine to be honest for one single mark you just basically want to show that obviously if you take away two standard deviations away from the mean that it's going to equal 14.975 and that's obviously less um, sorry greater than 13 so therefore 13 is going to be an outlier. It then says state what effect if any removing the value of 13 from the sample would have on the standard deviation. So for this basically what you want to write is that it would decrease. Now if you're not sure what happens to it then all you need to do is just simply on your calculator remove the number 13 from this data and then just calculate standard deviation, compare that to the 28.7 value you got for 13C, and then just make a, a, a statement. Then moving on to question 14, it says that a probability distribution is given by, and we've got the function here and the values of x. It says where c is a constant, and the question is saying show that c equals one tenth. So for this, what we can do now, if I want to convert this into a probability function, then what we get is the probability of x equals x, and it's going to be c of 4 minus x, and that's for the values of zero x equals 0, 1, 2, or 3, and it's 0 for otherwise. So then setting up the probability distribution, what we get is we get x, and we get probability of x equaling x. And if I then look at the numbers, I've got 0, 1, 2, and 3. So then if I substitute x equals into this particular function, then I end up with 4 take away 0, which is 4. So this then becomes 4c. 4, 4 take away 1 is 3, so that's going to be 3c. 4 take away 2 is 2, so that's going to be 2c, and 4 take away 3 is 1c. Then from this table, we know that all of these probabilities need to add up to 1. So what we've then got is 4c plus 3c plus 2c plus 1c equals 1. So we've got 10c equals 1, so c equals 1 over 10. Then for b, it says calculate the probability that x is greater or equal to 1. So what I can then do is convert each of these. So that's going to be uh, 4 over 10. That's going to be 3 over 10, 2 over 10, and 1 over 10. So the probability of x being greater than 1 is basically going to be this plus this plus this. So it's going to be 3 tenths plus 2 tenths plus 1 tenth 
which is 6 over 10, or I can write it as 3 fifths, or I can write it as 0 0.6. So any of those would be absolutely fine. Then moving on to question 15, it says that two independent events A and B are such that, and we've got the probability of A equals 0 0.2, and the probability of A or B equals 0 0.8. It says find the probability of B. So for this particular question, what I need to do is if I first round up the, or locate the addition rule, so I've got the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. B. Now if I substitute the values that I've been given in the question, so I know that A or B is 0 0.8, the probability of A is 0 0.2, probability of B which is what I don't know. Now this here, because the events are independent, that the probability of A and B is going to be equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. Now we know that A is 0 0.2 so this is going to be 0 0.2 the probability of b so then substituting this into there then what we get is we get minus 0 0.2 the probability of b then doing a bit of rearranging we get 0 0.6 equals probability of b minus 0 0.2 probability of b which then equals 0 0.6 0 0.8 the probability of B. So therefore the probability of B is going to be 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.8 which gives me an answer of 0 0.75. Then moving on to 15 AII says find the probability of A and B well that's just going to be 0 0.2 multiplied by 0 0.75 which gives me an answer of 0 0.15. It then says for 15b, state with a reason whether or not the events A and B are mutually exclusive. Well, if A and B are independent, then they cannot be mutually exclusive. Because remember that mutually exclusive events are events that can't happen at the same time. But if events are independent, then one has no impact on the other. So therefore, if they're independent, they cannot be mutually exclusive. Then moving on to question 16, it says that Andrea is the manager of a company which makes mobile phone charges. In the past, she found that 12% of all charges are faulty. Andrea decides to move the manufacturer of charges to a different factory. Andrea tests 60 of the new charges and finds that four charges are faulty. Investigate at a 10% level of significance whether the, the proportion of faulty charges has reduced. So first things first, what we need to do is set up our hypothesis. So we said that the null hypothesis is going to be where, let me just get rid of that equal sign. So the null hypothesis is where the probability remains at 0.12 and that for the prob the alternate high probability well we're going to assume that this new factory is going to be better so if it's better then the probability of it being uh, less faulty is going to be less than 0.12 then looking at the hypothesis we can see that it's a one tail test we're testing at a 10% sig level and the parameters are that we've tested a sample size of 60 and the probability of, of a faulty one is 0.12. So then from this, what we can then do is then work out our test statistic, which is ultimately finding the probability of getting four and then the inequality is always going in the same direction as the one in the alternate hypothesis and it's always equal to. So then from this, I can just work this out using the calculator. So if you go on to menu, distribution, you want binomial, CD, you then want to select variable, and then the parameters are where n equals 60, p equals 0 0.12, and x equals 4. 
And if I type that in, I should get a probability value of 0 0.139. So then looking at this from the conclusion perspective, so the conclusion is that as 0 0.139 is greater than 0 0.1, we accept the HO. And what does that mean? Well, it means that there is sufficient evidence at a 10% SIG level to suggest that the proportion of faulty charges has not changed. So something along those lines would be absolutely fine. Then to finish off, it then says state in context two assumptions that are necessary for the distribution that you've used in part A to be valid. Well, you could have one of three particular answers. So you could say that the probability of uh, selecting a faulty charger and you must say faulty charger can't just get away with saying charge because it would discount the mark uh, is fixed or you could say is the same you could say something along the lines of that a charger being faulty is independent and you could also go along the fact of that charges are randomly selected. Now other common um, replies to uh, answers to this particular question that wouldn't get you a mark would be saying that there's only two possible outcomes um, of it being faulty or not faulty. Now, personally speaking, I don't see the problem with that one, but uh, it is something that is discounted on the mark scheme. So your potential answers to get the two marks in this question needs to be two of the three ones stated. And you also try and make sure that you are using the word faulty rather than just a charger.